Greetings, Earthlings! Today we're going to take a quick look at switch debouncing, uh, using as an example these arcade switches that I got from SparkFun, which I showed in the last video. So, as you can see, uh, we have a setup here. I have a uh, power supply. Hi, I'm the Troy McClure of power supplies. Yeah, yeah. Like, we care. Um, logic analyzer slash storage scope, which I'm using just as an oscilloscope. And I have a little breadboard here with uh, basically three circuits set up that we'll look at. Okay. And this, of course, is the switch. Um, now, the first thing we're going to look at, we'll look at three different, three different things you can do. Um, but first, let's look at what the problem is. So, oh, you know, it helps to turn the power on. Okay. So, single trace, falling edge. So right now, I just have a pull-up resistor connected to the normally open... Uh, terminal of the switch. Pay no attention to the to the bing bongs. And the other side is grounded. Okay? And so we're tapping off of that pull-up resistor. When I press the switch, you can see a whole lot of crud. Um, wow, and that just ran off the, the end. It never even actually settled. There you can see it, it basically settles out over here. So it goes from a 1 to a 0, but a lot of crud in between. That can cause problems, okay? So, one option you have, since the switch will be going into a uh, microcontroller, microprocessor rather, in this case, um, you can do it in software. You read when you read a, a low value, basically see a transition from high to low, and just wait, you know, some amount of time before you look again and so you ignore any transitions that happen in the middle. Uh, that won't work if you're going into say using this to clock something going into an edge triggered flip-flop or something like that. So one solution well that was one solution software. Okay another solution is if you have a single pole, single throw switch is to use a Schmidt trigger. This is what the stupid computer uses. Whoops, I got that backwards. That's the output and this will be the input. Uh, and I will have to change it since there's an inverter in here and just a single inverter. Uh, the signal is going to be inverted so I'm going to have to change it to rising edge here. Whoops. Rising edge. Okay. Um, this is what the stupid computer uses on its front panel momentary switches. They're single pole double throw, but with center off. So essentially they're two single pole single throw momentary switches uh, in the same package. Uh, so again, normally open is connected to, and I'll put the circuit up. Normally open is connected to the input of this debounce circuit and the common is connected to ground. So, run waiting for analog trigger and there you can see a nice clean transition. Okay, in this case. It depends on the time constant. Uh, there's a capacitor in here, resistor capacitor, you know, the time constant of that um, is something you have to figure out uh, get the, to get the appropriate values for the switch you're using. Uh, if you happen to have a, a single pole double throw switch, which this does have, you see it's got, well I would call that a micro switch, but I think it's made by a different company. A micro switch is a company. Uh, this is actually a single pole double throw switch, okay? And so it has a, both a normally open and a normally closed connector. So I'm going to connect the normally closed there. The normally open goes here. And again, I'll put this circuit up. I'm using here a, a 74LS279. Uh, those are not uh, readily available off the shelf anymore. 
Uh, I got them from Jameco. They happened to have some in stock. Um, but uh, you can use cross couple It's basically cross-coupled NAND gates, but you get four debouncers in a package by doing this. You could use a 74 LS00 or whatever, 7400, um, but you'd be using two gates and you'd only get two uh, debouncers per package. So this is nice because I have three switches um, that uh, I can use uh, a single package and get all three switches debounced at the same time. Uh, I need to go back to Falling Edge. Okay, and we'll take a look at this one. And there's a nice clean transition. Now let me go to, let me go to Rising Edge and we'll just look at the other side of it. Well, that's a little trashy, but um, let's see. That's two and a half volts. That's five and a half volts. Um, so, so, and that's minus half a volt. So, it's three volts, one and a half, two, that's four volts. So it's, you know, um, that's not going to cause any real problems uh, as an input to another gate because it doesn't transition, it doesn't bounce slow enough. I, I am bothered that it's trashy. I'm not sure why it's trashy. Let's go back. Um, let's go back to this other one and see what it looks like. Well, let's go clear back. Clear back to the switch itself. Um, that's the normal. Okay, so now if I switch it to rising edge, what does it look like? Well, that's quite clean. Well, that's no good. Okay. Huh. So why do I get trash on the cross-coupled man gates? I don't know. I have to dig into that further, but I don't feel obligated to do that for the purpose of this video. We'll try it with the... Uh, This is the uh, Schmidt trigger. Ah! Oh, switch it to falling edge. Okay. And I get a nice clean signal, both of those. So that's some simple uh, switch debouncing techniques.